Hey, and what's going on? What's happening, y'all? Welcome to the Millennial Masterclass Podcast once again. I am one-third of the collective. They call me Trist, and I am situated right now in Harlem, New York. Let's throw it on over to Texas, seeing what's good. Hey, y'all. What's good? It's Les, a.k.a. LRL, Helen from Temple, Texas. Sean, what's going down in your hood? Hey, it's your girl, Sean the Don. I am in the DMV. Mm-hmm. Poke it out. Poke it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all I've been listening to is that Boy. blue wallet. Why don't you just listen to Vibrant so. Thing and just move on with your life? <laughs> We're not going to do that while they disrespect, especially this early on. Let's just keep it going. <laughs> oh, God. All right. What did y'all get into this past weekend? <laughs> Man, y'all already know because I was texting y'all. I had my five munchkins this weekend. My sister Ooh, said, my Oh my God. Yes, yes. Yes. I remember. Yes. Could you, could you yes. just tell the, could you just tell the listeners, please, the ages of these children and uh, the circumstances yes. under which you were watching all five children? Yes. So my sister and my brother in love, they dropped them off so they could enjoy their kidless weekend. Um, and they had a grand old weekend. They got pedicures. They went to lounges um, both nights with friends. They got brunch. Like they had a grand old time, which they deserve because their parents full time all the time. Um, so my sister has five under seven. Oldest is seven. The second one will be five a few days after Christmas. She has a three year old and then two two year old twins. So my mom and I, because I can't do it by myself, and she can't do it by herself. We tag team to watch them all weekend. It does take a village. Yes, it does. But the thing was, three of them were sick, with one being the sickest to where, oh you know, God. he kept, like, throwing up and just wasn't feeling well and stuff. So we had to make the, the best of the weekend. So we had, you know, movie nights and, you know, ate some good food. Didn't get to go see my grandma um, like we usually do when they come. Because, you know, with her help, we didn't want to, you know, bring the babies over there. But we had a grand old time. They were already asking to come back. I told them TT needs a few months. Uh, my mom's like, oh, no, I'm see you this next year. Month. I said, Look, TT about to book a trip next month. I need some time because woo, it being a parent is no joke. And so I shout out to all the parents out there. Your your hard work does not go unnoticed. Bless y'all. Y'all are the real It's MVP. a thankless job, but we thank you here on the millennium. Exactly. 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 Especially those with more than three. Any any amount more than three is way too many for potatoes. Look, Just if I had right. one child, I'd Hell be bald. No. I'd be bald. <laughs> Not because like <laughs> I lost my hair because I pulled the shit out because I'd be going to fuck crazy with a child. Like that's wild. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work you, you're like you're constantly moving. Like you you get them situated with food and so then you're trying to like, like tidy up a little bit and you're trying to get your own food, but then they need something and then like you're trying to get one changed and one in the bed and then you had another one. Like it's just constant going and I was just, I just so know tired. You sent that text out and you were like, Oh Lord, one of them just clocked me in the face. I about fell out laughing. I was on the ground just crying laughing. <laughs> They did. I was getting beat up, but not intentionally. But it's like, oh god, I would have unintentionally hit their asses back. (laughs) (laughs) You just gotta be. All you do is bite one, and then everything else is fine. Bite one, (laughs) hold one of them upside down. Yeah, exactly. Love my munchkins though. It's it's just shout out to my sister. She's superwoman. Her and my brother. Sean, you watch five kids. Let's say so. Let's say so. I was doing some home renovations, painting my kitchen. It's definitely not as fun as they make it look on HGTV. <laughs> yeah, is it? Tired. Is it ever fun on there? <laughs> Last week I painted the walls, and this weekend I was painting the cabinets. I'm about to get a gate put in my house this weekend, so I've been doing a lot of home renovations. In the front or in the back? In the backyard, so that you I can get a whole a new dog. house. Come on! It's oh, you get a, so dog? Can get a dog. Yes, if I can find one that's not a million dollars, I really want a dog. To <laughs> what kind of dog? Y'all be trying though? to tax for these damn dogs. Then when oh. you go get one from a shelter, they kind of like a lot of them have been through some things, and mm-hmm. I'd rather not have a dog with PTSD. You know, so mm. I, I, we understand. That's real. What, that what was kind the of best way though? I could put that. But what kind of dog do you want? Sean? A small one. Well, nigga, what does that mean? There are so many small <laughs> dogs, in a, a mini you know, or a toy really size. Like you dog. want like a I'm, beagle. What you want? I'm talking about like preferably somebody that can fit in a purse. If not, oh, wow. I okay. need you to still be able to fit in my hand. So you want like a terrier or some shit? Sure. Or it's like a, a chihuahua. We have chihuahuas. Wow. I used to have a chihuahua. It was kind of annoying, but he was a Doberman mixed with chihuahua. 
This is cool. Yeah. How does that even happen? Like parts don't fit. I, like, I, don't I was gonna know. ask, but I'm like, nah, I'm gonna leave it alone. You're, it's probably for the best. Know. You're you're not wrong. I don't know. I just know that was the kind of dog it was. Okay. But other than that, the weekend was pretty cool. Pretty cool weekend. How about yourself? Um, you know, not too much during the weekend. Um, it was filled with a lot of work and running around. Because there were some birthday things we went to, and then uh, my lady's friends had some things going on. Uh, we did actually get out one night, and actually, I, I went to a club, y'all. I actually went to a club. I ain't been to a club. Oh, all. snap. And got down, Ooh. and I was dancing. And I Old was, man Tris getting back in the club. Wow, okay, let's 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 uh, let's curb that. I don't know where that nom de guerre came from, but let's get rid of that. Put that right in the trash. Anyway, <laughs> we went out and it was a good time. But you know, it was really crazy. I actually got to Nina Pop on stage. You know, I had, I'm sorry for those who don't know what the Nina Pop is the chicken head. I got to do the chicken head on stage because they played hot in here by now. Oh, Nelly. chicken head. And there was a stage. Wait, what did you call like, this chicken head? The Nina Pop? Yeah, I that's that's a, that's a either. southern Illinois. That's a southern Illinois term. Like where like the origin yeah. of it came from is the Nina Pop. That's what we call it. Uh, and I got to Nina got Pop to on stage. Out. I might even drop an Instagram video about it. I don't know. I got one. I don't know. That's so vintage of you. I like that. As okay. fuck, man. As fuck. I would have tore your ass up in the chicken head though. I'm just letting you know. Okay, with the little turn. Ooh. I'm gonna tell you right now. I would add a little toe in there with it. Come I'm gonna on. tell you right now. You will not. I defy you to come get some of this. Okay, you don't want this smoke. It's whatever. Right it's whatever. I Challenge. Only... Come on. <laughs> I can only do it for about thirty seconds. That's it. I feel that. No, that's 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 appropriate. But you know, <laughs> here we do have a segment that uh is all near dear to our hearts, and our producer does tireless work on this segment. So let's drop it on him one time. The bulletin board. So, you know, we have to talk about everybody's hot button um, this past week. Did y'all hear about Astroworld Festival? Uh, How of course. Could you not hear about that? We, heard, we heard about Houston Freakniks. We heard about it. Not Houston Freakniks. Child, well, this will probably be the last of it because um, at least eight are dead as far as they're reporting. I still feel like there has to be more, but. Do you right think it's that many reporting. people? You think it's that? You think uh, it's more than eight? From what I've read, what I've heard, the videos I've seen, there were so many people who were dropping like flies to the ground. I just feel like the number has to be higher, but they're not reporting it. But don't let me speculate. I'm just going to report on the facts that we do know right now. So, of course, this happened last Friday night in Houston at NRG Stadium. About 50,000 people were there at the sold out um, event, although it could have been more just because people were you know, bum rushing the barricades and, you know, jumping over people who didn't have tickets. So it really could have been more than 50,000, but we're estimating that number. It was Freak It was Freak Nick. (laughs) So what we know is um, for whatever reason, the crowd began to push and surge towards the front of the stage as Travis started to perform, which caused the people in the front to be compressed where they were unable to escape. And I actually saw a video of this. And you know how, like, when Someone's in front of you and they lean back, which causes you to lean back and a person behind you leans back like a domino effect. That's exactly how it looked. And people were like in there like sardines. And if someone's hands were up, they could not put them down. And if your hands are by your side, you could not move them. They were that jam-packed. Many people said that they couldn't breathe and felt like they were suffocated, suffocating. And some even, of course, begin to pass out, as we know. They still haven't said exactly what the cause of death is. The medical examiner is still examining that. But investigators are still reviewing videos. Lawsuits have already started to pile in as of Saturday. You know, people already saw starting to file lawsuits against Live Nation, against Travis, against Drake. All Lawsuits are going everywhere. Is there, um, can, can I ask they, a, qu- a quick question, though? I did hear some, like, you know, on the Reddit boards, people were talking about a biological agent. Is that, like, just hearsay, rumor? Is that something people are looking into? So, initially, the chief police got on camera and said that um, there was, there was, a, I believe, a security officer who they had to um, administer Narcan to, which is, like, a, an agent that helps people who have been, like, injected with, like, narcotics and stuff. Um, because they, he did have like a prick, but I watched as early as of a couple hours ago, he came back and said that, you know, um, the security guard's story changed and he doesn't believe he was pricked by anything. He thinks he just passed out. So they're still uncertain if mm. that rumor of people being injected with something is true or not. That's still unfounded. So mm. I don't want to say yay or nay because the story is changing now. Um, they canceled the second day. Travis is already committed to you know, refunding everybody. Um, I heard that he may be paying for some funerals and stuff like that. The age ranges of the victims 
ranged from as young as 14 to as old as 27, which for me, the issue for me is with the festival, there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's all kinds of unknowns. I feel like there should be an age limit. No, lo- no younger, mm-hmm. really for me, 21, but at least 18, like kids should not be allowed at festivals. Concert venues, that's different. Like I went to the Scream Tour when I was in like middle school, my mom and my sister, that's different, not a festival. Um, but Travis actually released a statement where he said he's absolutely devastated by what took place. His prayers goes out to the families and all those impacted from the event. Um, and that Houston PD has his total support. People are saying the writings were on the wall that something like this could happen. Um, I feel like there were a lot of preventative measures that should have been put into place to prevent this as far as like having enough security guards, um, having enough EMS on standby, not allowing 50,000 people to buy tickets for this because we still are in a pandemic, you know, at the end of the day. So it's just a tragedy. Um, my this prayers- This took place, place in Texas, family. right? Huh? This took place in Texas though, of course. Yes, it took place in Houston at NRG Stadium. Okay, yeah. Just, all right, yeah. just didn't put that out what, there. What, what does that mean? What, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just did nothing, that's whatever. Just, just putting that out there, just putting that out there. All right, that is, all right. That's been very, very sad. I definitely agree with you on that age limit for children to be at concerts or festivals. I think it's super inappropriate because I know what I'd be doing at festivals. Like, so I don't think it would what, be- What might that be, Sean? What, what do you do at festivals? <laughs> We're gonna let that slide. Okay, all right, it's cool. It's whatever, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Right. <laughs> Just saying, uh, we, I mean, I do things that you couldn't do when you were under 21. Oh, absolutely. No, and I, totally I think agree. that's kind of inappropriate to have kids and having people smoking and like, you know, be a lot going on at different kinds of festivals. So I think it's kind of inappropriate to even have kids there. But are people blaming Travis Scott because they said sometimes his concerts get rowdy? Because I think everyone kind of knows that. Like, I don't think that that is his secret. fault in any way. Yeah. Just because the crowd got, because I still don't understand how these people died. Was it hot? Yeah, because mob, like you just people are just dying because they got pushed. Like I don't know so, what's going on. It didn't seem like elderly people. I don't know. I think the exact cause of death has not been fully explained yet. I think it was, you know, maybe like cardiac arrest or distress from not being able to breathe because it was so many people, people. and they were, you know, so close together. Um, mm-hmm. I think that the People's issues with Travis is that he continued to perform at least like I read 37 minutes after um, it was known that people were starting to pass out. Like there's a video where he like stops and like, hey, hey, man, you know, can we get EMS here? Someone's passed out here. Like he says that. But then like he continues. The sh- he continues the show instead of being like, hey, we got to stop. We got to like figure this out type of thing. So I think people are blaming him for that. Um, there's of course a lot of conspiracies going around. Blame anything. That's what I'm saying already. They're talking about biological one, ages and stuff. One or two people pass out at a show. You're gonna cancel the whole show. You don't I mean, Michael Jackson could never have performed if you that was the case. They, right. <laughs> people was just you mind if I out. come down there and sing to you? Oh, that that was was the thing. If I was at a show out. and I found out that this is the reason why it's over because two people passed out, I'd be like, I'd be what? pissed. Yeah. But that's just because hell? you know. But you didn't know the whole story. But like, why would he stop just because two people passed out? It could have been they was on drugs. It could have been a uh, heat flash. It could have been anything. But he did try to get them help. So I don't know why he would be the blame for that. But I don't. I just feel like people always just want to push blame on someone when it was just a tragic accident. Correct. Like, Correct. did he tell these people to push forward? Did he incite this in any way except do what he usually does at a concert? So I don't. I don't think that that's really his fault. I don't think that that's fair. I agree for sure. I mean, and also the other thing I wonder about is how often do y'all have. Uh, festivals in Houston because the way they promote Astro World, it's just saying it just seems as if like people don't really just like get hip hop festivals in Houston because I just feel like <laughs> it's the only one they got right because like the way they talk about it just just like just in the way that it's promoted they're like yo it's the biggest one it's this has got to be our thing so is this just like their time to shine and really get like to that made in America type level or like why I just I guess my question uh, is like why be- does this one get that kind of turnout you know. Because, I mean, he's dope, honest, but I know Drake Travis, is there. To be honest, Travis is never on my radar. Um, and I always hear about this festival, Astro Fest, after the fact. So it's not, from my understanding, honestly, people I know don't really listen to Travis like that. So, like I said, he's never on my radar. I hear about it after the fact. Um, I didn't know one person who was there, and she's fine. But, no, like, we have, like, different type of smaller festivals here. But I feel like this one is on a grander scale. And, like I said, just where it was at NRG, it just sh- wasn't built to hold that many people. So, there were a lot of things that were wrong in the planning stages. 
Gotcha. So right. that's that doesn't really have to do with the artist. This is the venue. Y'all sold these tickets. Travis yeah, Scott didn't walk course, around and sell tickets. Right. But of course, they're going to hold the artist responsible as well. So it's know. just the, it's, yeah. yeah. And by yeah. no way am I a Travis Scott fan. I don't even really know many of his songs. I, I know three like, songs about Travis Scott. I'm just saying. I know three songs. Yeah. That's about it's it. That it's that sicko world. More Sick, sicko mode. Sicko mode. Oh, see? That's one with Drake, right? And Anna, yeah. though, right? Yes. I know two. Oh, no. Butterfly effect. Can I change? Not oh, Portland. I know Portland. That's a good one. I don't, I don't know, know that one either. I just wanted to say I'm not like a You know, my side either. girl got a five ass with a screen crack. Still hit me back right away. Something, something. All that's Drake. Of... Yeah. Travis Scott's yeah, on that song. That's their song together. That's their song. Oh, couldn't, couldn't have told you that. No clue. <laughs> I just know Drake. <laughs> Who knew? As you can see, guys, it's a big, it's a big issue. It's a big issue, and it's ongoing. And our prayers go out to the families um, of the deceased or anybody yes. that was caused distress mm -hmm. by that issue. Hopefully, they figure out what really caused all of this and get to the bottom of it, so they can yeah. keep having this festival. Because clearly, it means a lot to folks in Houston to have this festival. You know, seriously, because I literally anybody I know from Houston that just talks about this festival, they're like, "Oh my God, this means like we want to go or whatever." That's why I'm. I'm asking you about it because clearly it must mean a lot to people that people want to go and see it. Nah, I was more excited for Millennium Tour than this. I didn't even know this was happening. I mean, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one tragic, tragic thing I saw earlier today on the news, actually. It was um, a grandfather who was praying for his, asking for prayers for his nine-year-old grandson who was there with his father. His father actually had him on his shoulders, you know, watching the show. Mm -hmm. And his father ended up passing out. So when his father oh. passed out, little boy fell, he got trampled. So now he's oh. in a medically induced coma. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think we need to reevaluate how things are done before right. the concert or festival even starts. It needs to be age limits. We need to have more security EMS per person because I believe the ratio was there was like one security guard per like 100 people or some crazy number that it's like, that's ridiculous. That's not nearly enough. So I think that um, it's going to come down to like the, the promotion team, Live Nation, the venue, like, they, I think they're at the core of, like, the responsible ones. But, unfortunately, I think, I think Travis is going to get caught in the crosshairs as far as being sued as well. So, but the tickets, we'll see what the outcome is. But those ticket prices aren't that expensive, though, right? Because that was another thing about this tour. It's supposed to be an affordable festival, right? That's one of the big draws of Astro I believe World. so. I believe so. And, apparently, he's refunding everyone from what I heard. You know, he, yeah. and then he uh, pulled out of the day in Vegas, which is next week, I believe. And he was replaced by Post Malone for that. So, like, he is, uh, you know, stepping he's away. He, some help he, like, yeah. this is well, they, remo they removed his emote from Fortnite. And he was, like, I think one of the first artists to have, like, an emote and do, like, a full life performance yeah. on Fortnite. Yeah, he did. So, like, oh, for sure. Yeah. So, he's starting to... You see some of the effects. I don't. I don't think the word cancel has been thrown out there, but I, you know it is starting to like hit him in his pockets a little bit until we like really figure out what exactly happened and where things went wrong. Got you. Got you. Well, that, again, the tragedy. Our hearts go out. Thoughts and prayers. Definitely from the Millennial Masterclass to all those affected yes. by it. It's crazy, man. Absolutely. Yes. But I guess that means it's time to move right on then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep my ears to the streets and report back next week. And again, one of our no. favorite segments. Honestly, this is my favorite segment. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but this is definitely my favorite segment. And today we're doing something special with this segment because today this is the lesson plan, but the lesson plan is a little different. And I think our producer is gonna give us a little insight into how so, because today you're gonna get to know us. You know, we're gonna be vulnerable with you. We're gonna show what's going on on the inside. I mean, we might even cry today a little bit. I'm, I'm like, hell. So we're going to get... I don't think it's going to be that deep, but... Okay, maybe not. Whatever. Questions <laughs> first. Jesus. So yeah, I have a few questions I'm going to ask y'all, and I'll answer a few myself. Um, better answer but it's just questions. to give our listeners... Um, <laughs> it's just so our listeners can get to know us a little better and, you know, how we think and everything. So I'm going to start with a few would you rather questions. So would you rather travel back in time to meet your ancestors or to the future to meet your descendants? the future mm, for so? sure the future for sure the future and i'm gonna tell you why the future because the past has already happened the past is the past like fuck the past whatever i can't do anything <laughs> about that but the future i'm very excited to see what's gonna happen far beyond my years like i want to like jump in like year 4000 and see if the earth hasn't like you know burned into a pulp or some shit like you know i'm just saying i'm curious as to what's going on in the future mm -hmm. but yes the future for me that's like a little dark turn with the world yeah you never know because we may fuck past. something up as human beings 
<laughs> Probably. Since you're gonna come, it ain't gonna be no earth. <laughs> right? <laughs> gonna be after earth <laughs> wow. but i would definitely say the past i don't know much about my ancestry so i think it would be cool to get to know them slavery was like real people. everybody slavery was yeah. real okay we what, what if they drop you right in the, the middle past. of like a slave field or something i'm be, like, where harry it is <laughs> you I, ain't doing day this. With them. I always <laughs> say that if i go back into time i have to bring certain weapons with me like i feel like one automatic rifle and enough bullets like i just feel like i'm taking care of everybody they didn't have they had muskets who gonna take me on a boat with a musket? Right, right. It's like they drop you in the field. You gotta spend a day with your great, 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 great grandma, like being kind and talking to her and stuff. Like, how tragic was this? I'm not built for this. Like, no, no. I'm sorry I'm that you're having to do this, but I'm about to shoot this. Are y'all ever afraid though? <laughs> wow. <laughs> are y'all ever afraid though? That, like, you know, like in like your like your sickest of minds that like you might run into like like your grandfather or something and think he was bad. And then be like, oh, I'm going to talk to him. And then not knowing that I was your grandfather or some shit, something wild. Um, like, that always freaks me out <laughs> going back into time and not knowing my ancestors and then thinking she's fine or something. And then like some shit goes down. Ugh. And then now like I'm my own grandfather. And then grandfather. you fucked your that grandma, huh? That is wild. Yeah. That is a wild concept. Wild. Leslie, let's go with your answer. Um, So <laughs> I, I would say future based on like you know how Tristan said it's cool to see you know what the future looks like but I don't plan on having any children so I won't have that future so I'm gonna have to say pass because it would be cool to just I just want to see how resilient my ancestors was and how did they get through that you know what was the mentality like like it would just be amazing to have that you just want to walk around without a cell phone I just don't see the point in that <laughs> right so I think that would be amazing to just kind of get into their mind and how they survived all that all right would you rather live without heat and AC or live without social media and the internet? Social media and the internet. I can't fuck with up no heat and no AC. <laughs> I, I got a blanket right now. I, do. I can't. You definitely do. Mm, well, you because you said the interwebs. So I can't live. I really can't live without the interwebs just because there's too many things on the interwebs that I need. I'm not even talking about just social media. Like, honestly, they can, they can throw that in the trash. But mm -hmm. like, like I can't get on and find a documentary I want to watch. Like I can't go look up some music. That means I can't even go through my the whole epitaph of music. That, nah, 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 nah. I can deal without heat and AC. My body will regulate itself at some point. It's gonna take a minute. Okay. Like homeostasis will get back to what it needs to be. But nah, nah, nah. I need I need the interwebs. I feel you. I I would probably say the internet too, just because like I've had to go. A summer in texas without ac and i survived that so it's like i know i can do it it's uncomfortable and you don't want to do it but i've done it before so i'll probably say the internet for the same purposes like we depend so much on the internet now it's like what would life look like without the internet like i know under like what seven we had that we had that experience but now that we've known it so long it's like what would that look like without it so i mean honestly the internet's been around as long as we've been living it's just that it wasn't as accessible you know what i mean exactly right so right yeah. Would you rather have in invisibility or flight? Flight. I love people to see me. I don't flight. want anybody never not to see me. <laughs> <laughs> you serious? The only thing you can do with invisibility is like mind other people's business. No, because I don't really give a fuck about what people are saying about me in rooms that I'm not in. So I don't really need the invisibility unless I'm trying to rob a bank. That's what I'm saying. Money. That's what I'm saying. The I mean, invisibility comes in, handy, comes in very handy yeah. for stuff like that, for like, you know, tactical uh, covert missions. You know what I mean? Like rob a bank. I'd be you know? scared. I'd still be scared to rob a bank even if I was invisible. So I'm <laughs> what they, how they gonna see you? What they mean? You just I don't know. They I'm just not on camera the anymore. The the I don't see me. you. <laughs> no, but I need flight because like I don't want to get on a plane. I just want to fly to Seychelles. You know what I'm saying? Just true. Yeah. And then land right. and have all all the ladies look at me. Like, oh my god, did he just fly here? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Looking fantastic, too. It's probably cold as shit when you're flying, though. I'm going to have on a suit. Don't worry about it. I'm going to have me a super I need suit. To on. Uh, what is it? Teleport. Because flying is it'll probably take a long time. What if you fly slow? Oh, that like would, that would suck. Oh, that oh would my suck. God. <laughs> I hope that's and then the if case. it starts raining, when you go from place to place, you go, I didn't prepare for this. I didn't bring an umbrella. I'm just out here getting wet. Look, like, I was prepared to wear my little Deadpool suit to fly in, you know, some little <laughs> awkward situation. I'll be fine. The poncho. But I'm not happy <laughs> about flying slow. How fast are we flying in this, Les? You didn't give any parameters. That's not part of the scenario. It's just a quick one, two, yes or no. Whatever. I'm taking flight. I'm taking flight. You're taking flight. No matter what. I think I 
pick invisibility. I think it'd be cool to just move in different spaces without people knowing that you're there or people watching. Your body heat is not invisible. They can still find you. I ain't going to be on top of people. And like we are talking about with technology. So I think the question was simple. Invisibility or flight, I pick invisibility. Fair enough. All right. Thank you. All right. Would you rather have universal respect or unlimited power? Chris is going to pick power. Mm. I'm going to say universal respect respect or what? Really? Universal respect for me because unlimited power corrupts absolutely. And I really do not need to be that corrupt. So Hmm. I'm going to say unlimited respect because then there's really no place you can't move. And then you can take those meetings and maybe find a way to get to the place, you know, and get to that Star Trek, the Federation, and get to total peace. And we can explore the galaxy and stuff, you know? That's a good answer. Okay. Yeah, he making me feel bad because I'm thinking I'm going with power. I don't blame you. (laughs) I don't blame you at all. Power is like, thank you for respecting me, but am I not the role (laughs) that I want? Am I not making the controls that I want to make? You know, so I'm going to go with power. I understand. I'm with power as well. But I I love Tristan's answer that did also make me think. So I was like, yeah, that sounds like shit. You know, I don't want to be like a dictator or anything. I don't need to be that deep, you know? Right. Because right. just at some point, you're going to be making decisions down the line that they're just going to be unpopular and people are going to be ready to ride on you. It's just what it is. So it's just like, and I get that because that's just what it is. But at least with respect, I've made those decisions and at least, you know, they can respect me for it. So I don't know. No, that okay. makes sense. All right. Would you rather have Beyonce's talent or Jay-Z's business acumen? Jay-Z. Beyonce's talent. Jay-Z. <laughs> I'll be fucking it up all the time if I could sing and dance. <laughs> no, I'm because, doing now and I can't do either. Well. No, because the problem so. is they said Beyonce's talent. They didn't say Beyonce's publishing. They didn't say her publishing agent. Like they didn't say any of that. So like mm-hmm. you could be as talented as Beyonce and then live in like fucking Amazon somewhere and nobody can see you. Like that's why. Okay. Or wait, what was the other one? Jay Z's Jay Z's business acumen. Business acumen. So that all the really knowledge won't that he help is, you that um, much either if you don't already start with money. No, you can not give necessarily. Me some advice that's not helpful for a broke nigga like me. You no, know? because the thing well, is, not, that myself. Talking... <laughs> not myself. I'm not broke. But, you know. What I'm saying is this: <laughs> they're talking about his complete business acumen now. So yeah, you get all of Beyonce's skills now, but all of Jay Z's business acumen now. So he's gonna have insight into things about maybe places to find some money or some donors, whatever that you probably wouldn't have. So honestly, I want that acumen. I want. I want what he knows. I agree. I'm with the acumen. I- I think that knowledge would be great, but you really need something else to stand on it. It kind of reminds me of how people say, would you rather take a million dollars or go to lunch with Jay-Z for an hour? A million like, dollars. What the fuck information is Jay-Z going to tell you in an hour that can help you if you already don't have the funds to do something? I mean, if he's going to invest more than a million, then if that's he's the, gonna we're going invest, to lunch. Why would he just go around <laughs> investing? I mean, that's how people get more money. They invest. And just a random person? He's probably if you have not, the correct business like, proposal... If you have the correct business proposal, I mean, you know what they say about luck is when success is when uh, opportunity uh, right, so meets you preparation. Got the, yeah. You got the business plan ready. So if you have this conversation with Jay-Z. I mean, I have one on my computer like, right now. I'm ready to show Jay-Z. Oh, okay. 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 Carter, come talk okay. To me. okay. Come on. Not a problem. Tristan says, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I ain't okay. going to tell y'all where it is because some hackers out there, they might, might break into my shit. <laughs> it's ready. It's ready. That's real. All right. Would you rather have a personal maid or a personal chef? I'm picking chef all day. Uh, I don't mind cleaning, but I do not like cooking. So chef me. Maid. Maid. And she's going to have very specific duties. Maid. Wait, why are you saying like that? What do you, you know? Why? Don't have specific that's duties. Like. And it's mild. It's like, I don't know. I feel like there's more into the answer, but I'm not. There's gonna nothing more into the answer other than she's going to have very specific duties. I appreciate her. Mm-hmm. As opposed to other maids? Y'all read between the lines. Don't read between mm. any lines. Just hear what I'm saying. Well, I'm going with Chef duty. Leslie, just like you. Would you <laughs> Would you rather be an extra in an Oscar-winning movie or the lead in a box office bomb? Mm. I knew um, it was going to get you, Tristan. Mm, that's tough, but I'm going to say the lead in a bomb because I got paid more. Yeah, and then people are going to be talking about it, you know, talking about you, mm-hmm. so your name And because be there's so many reasons a movie goes wrong. Like whether it didn't get promoted enough, 
bad director, bad producer, the script wasn't strong enough, like you didn't get the cast you wanted. There's so many different reasons. And then let's say I wrote, directed, and produced it. Then they're going to be like, oh, you did too much. So then like you actually probably come out ahead with a bomb. But like I was just an extra. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm, I'm uncredited. Like I'm some non-union worker. Fuck that. No, I ain't going to lose you. I'm with you. I'd rather I'm be gonna go with the bomb. bomb. On the bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because then at least it was your show and you went out your way. Exactly. I feel you. Yep. We're all in agreement on that one. Okay. Um, so these aren't would you rather question and more like icebreaker questions, but what song or album could you listen to on repeat? You already know mine. This is easy. Is you gonna Emancipation say pretty Ricky? of Mimi? Is you gonna say pretty Ricky? Is that Emancipation of Mimi? Yep. Emancipation of Mimi is mine. Um mm -hmm. Voodoo by D'Angelo. The, the greatest hits by Prince. Uh this one, two, and the B side, and then um, okay. you was only supposed to pick one. Not four. Oh, okay, okay. The Voodoo by D'Angelo done. Voodoo by D'Angelo. What what song or album? So you can name one song that you can put play on repeat, and one album that you can play on repeat. Oh well, one song, S. G. Lewis featuring Louis Mattis, uh, no less. I'd be putting that on repeat. Love that song. Not the one with G. Easy. No disrespect to G. Easy, but it wasn't a great version. Fair. And then your album was Emancipation Mimi. Do you have a song? That you about repeat, Sean? Please hit him up by Tupac. I can yeah. listen to that all day. <laughs> oh my God, you're going to be in an angry mood. You're just going to be angry. <laughs> it makes me laugh oh. at some of the things he says. So I wouldn't be that angry. Here's a funny song. You're Especially right. at the end, you'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> like, sir, who hurt, hurt you? someone because they got sick of sale? Like, oh my God. Right. Y'all know mine. My song is on the album. It'll, of course, be Pretty Ricky, Your Body, and Pretty Ricky, Blue Stars. Y'all know I, I played that on repeat. Anyway, regardless, so your Jamaican lover stroking in your patois. stroking in your patois. I be your Mexican. Don't get me started because I'll wrap the whole CD right now. Let's, so, yeah, yeah, we got to keep it going. I understand. <laughs> so, if you could live in one fictional universe, which one would you choose? Um, damn, damn, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. Um, where um, I want to be the only man on where the <laughs> island that Wonder Woman with Themyscira. I want to be the only guy there, and then like, yeah. <laughs> That's where. Okay. Okay. No, nah, well, you got to fight every day. I ain't trying to strap up with a chariot sword. <laughs> no, nah, that's too much. <laughs> Sean, you take it first. I ain't got this one. You, you got to go first. Did I don't know my options. Wakanda? You can say Wakanda. All right, then that's where I'm going. Damn, that's that was a really right. good option. But like, there's always that some shit going on there. Like, niggas are trying to attack <laughs> and blow it up. Like, and then to chat, you know, to Chalagon, all kind of stuff. Yeah, I was going to say Wakanda at first, but I think I would pick, like, the Avatar universe because it just was so cool, and I love that movie. So Wait a minute, You want to be a Navi? The blue one or the cartoon? Yeah, like, why not? They look so cool. Uh, I thought you meant you wanted to be, like, a firebender. I was like, oh, that's dope, but never mind. That's no. cool. That's just... no. Don't sound so disappointed. <laughs> I like, mean, oh, no, that's great. It's that's cool. Great. It's great. We love it. It's awesome. I just didn't want to be a blue dog. Or fake. They fake, y'all. <laughs> they fake. No, nah, let me let me think of a let me think of a world that was really dope. That was really, really dope. Maybe like just whatever world that like there's like like everybody is like, oh my God, Tristan, you find a shit. And then like there's oh a bunch of ladies God. and stuff. I don't know. What? I don't know. Maybe I you really should go don't... to the Wonder Woman place because isn't it like all women? So they're Yeah, women, but the I thing is that they fight there the daily. Woman. Like you literally have to have a sword and like a shield every day, and they wear a bunch of chariot shoes and like it's 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 uh, a so lot. You want to be sexy, but you don't want to be a warrior, right? No, I'm trying to be sexy, flexy. Can't like, fight. I'm, I can fight. <laughs> I'm just not trying to fight every day. Every day. You, I don't think you know what goes on at the mascara. I don't think you understand. Like that is a tough. Fight for your place. woman every day, man. I mean, that's cool. That's real. That's fine. At least I have superpowers and shit. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. All right, I accept that. All right. If you could choose any two famous people to have dinner with, who would they be and why? Tron? Wale, because I love him, and Rihanna, because wow. obviously. Are they going to perform bad, the remix at the dinner, or what's, what's going on? <laughs> that wasn't even her. That wasn't, She's on the bad remix. Yes, that's her. That's Tiana's on the, original, on the remix. On the remix, Rihanna's on the remix. Okay, okay. I'm like, oh, it's a whole nother girl on that song. I don't know. That was the first people that literally came to my mind. So I'm sticking with, I'm definitely sticking with Wale because that's my boo. Um, I could have just picked somebody better, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Kenya Barris. And for the lady, I'm going to go with hmm, Viola Davis. Yes. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going <laughs> to say Viola. I love Viola Davis, man. I really do. She's the goddamn best. Love her. All right, those were solid picks. Leslie? 
Oh, I honestly didn't have mine picked out, but I I think I might go with two women on this one. I think Shonda Rhimes, um, mm-hmm. just because everything she touches turns to gold, and I think she has such an amazing story. And then I would pick, um, I was trying to think of a man. I was going to pick Michelle Obama first, but let's go with Barry. Let's go with Barack. Like, I feel like- Uncle Barry? I'm going to Uncle Barry. I'm going to yeah. Barry. Yeah. And you know, uh, that's the one I'm going to like. My so. fellow American, I <laughs> that when, yes. you're, when you're alone. You have to understand that hope and change. I'll be doing this all day. <laughs> That's a good impression, life. Tristan. That was actually really good. All I right, last that. question. What most surprised you when you first arrived on campus or first started classes at Howard? That they the first gonna... surprised me? Oh, no, you go first. You seem like you jump right off. Go. You got it. I was going to say, I'm not, it's so basic, but literally the first thing that surprised me was meeting people from all over the country that I've never met before. Like, I've never met people from Texas, people from, like, California and shit like that. So that was very surprising to me. I didn't know that I was going to experience that so soon at Howard. For me, it was the the size of the reservoir. It was smaller than I thought it was going to be. And the fact that... These are better than pictures. And the fact that we didn't have visitation, and that was even a concept. I was like, what the fuck is this? I was hot. <laughs> I was hot. And then, oh, no, and the, and the third thing that surprised me is because how they picked my roommate. Literally, uh, this is the true story. I walked into the door, right, uh, Drew Hall, and I'm there. People were thinking I'm older at the time because I got, got facial hair and shit, so they're thinking I'm older. So I'm like, no, I'm a freshman. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, we'll go stand over there. And then I see my roommate to this day, still my good friend, Mr. Justin Stevens. Shout him out. We'll probably have him on here at some point. I look at him. I'm like, yo, what's good, bro? What's up? And they're like, y'all two are roommates because we were standing by each other. <laughs> that's that's what happened. That's probably the most surprising wow. thing. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, So mine would be similar to Sean, just like meeting people from all over. You know, I'm coming from a small city in Texas. I ain't really been anywhere, don't really know anybody, you know, outside of Texas. So that was amazing. But also like the class sizes, because I feel like, you know, from TV, from like movies and um, TV shows, you see when cl- when colleges are depicted in college classrooms, they're like huge and everything and all these students. But of course, being at Howard and HBCU, it was definitely smaller class sizes, more intimate. The teacher actually knows who you are type of thing. So that was probably uh, a big shocker to me. And that's all the questions I have for y'all. Uh, well, that was I, a cute activity. I like uh, that. We it was cute as fuck, like but I definitely just found the answer to the question earlier about what fictitious world? Harry Potter. It would definitely be Harry Ooh, Potter. Ooh, mm-hmm. duh. Post Voldemort, though. Post Voldemort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post Voldemort. That's a good one. For I'm sure. I haven't even watched Harry Potter, y'all. What? Sean, I can't even believe what I just we heard. We grew up on the Harry Potter. What that's like saying? a millennial you sin. Read the book? That's like a millennial this is sin. <laughs> This is how I got cussed out in the barbershop the other day because I said I never watched Django. Nigga, mm-hmm. what? Even I, I seen Django. You know, I seen a lot. I got understand oh, Tarantino, you know, all that. Uh, I get that, but Django. Uh, yeah, I think it's nah. on Netflix right now. It is on Netflix right now. Go it put, is. Put That's it what on. they were saying. Do you watch Django off in this house party? How about it? <laughs> oh, Lord. You ain't seen how. I think I one is talk, way better than the no. other. And I ain't even seen Django. Next segment. Next segment. <laughs> Anyway, well, thank you for this game, producer. I enjoyed that, and hopefully people got a little bit of insight into us, and maybe you know a few of the things that make these crazy folks tick in the collective. At the Millennial Masterclass here, folks, it is not all work. We do have some play. And when we do play, we like to do it outside. And this little segment we like to call Recess. So, y'all, it is time for us to talk about music. And obviously, since Halloween has passed, you already know that means it's time for Mariah Carey's Christmas. No, no, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that at all. That's I'm exactly tired of this shit. what that means. I'm tired of this shit. The I'm tired of it. The day after Halloween, you turn on Mariah Carey. I thought it used to be 
um, December 1st, but no, we're skipping Mm-mm. Thanksgiving. We're going straight to Mariah Carey. She already got back on the top. What are those publishing checks look on like? ITunes. Oh, she gets book money from this song alone. Like, y'all? It, <laughs> every year it re-enters the top charts. Like, I'm not one of the people that immediately starts playing Christmas music the day after Halloween. My sister is. She's already been on it. But I should like to air it out because it's like, once you turn on the Christmas music, it's going to be on until after January 1st. So it's like, I like to ease into it. But Miss Mariah, honey, she her song has re-entered the charts. She released a new holiday song with um, Kirk Franklin and Khalid. And she's getting and ready to That is an interesting Khalid, pairing. Khalid. Khalid and Kirk oh, Franklin and Oh, I thought you Mariah. said Khalid. I'm like, no. milkshake? Yeah, no, it's, a mil- it's a milkshake Christmas. You know what it is. It's a bossy <laughs> Christmas, you know. And she's getting ready to release another special on Apple TV. Her special last year was pretty cute. I, I actually it. really liked it. I did like it as well. So I'm definitely excited yeah. to see that. Me too. Shout out to Mariah. We love you, girl. Come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, girl. But on the other, on the younger side of music, we have Summer Walker just dropped her new. <laughs> no shade. The younger side of music. That song is you like know, 30 Mariah years old Karen now, would man. love that shade because she is the best with the shade. She's we all queen. know that. You're She's right. She's queen. Right. So she would have right. been like, oh, okay, you're fine. I'll take it, girl. But seriously, how did y'all feel about Summer Walker's album? Did you listen to it? What are you thinking? No, I'm fucking with it. It's it's nice. It's smooth. Because she's right in the pocket. Like, Summer was one of those artists that, like, I knew she was going to have some staying power once I finally, like, went into her music and realized that she stays in the pocket. So, like, there's, there's not too many artists that do that and do it well. And Summer definitely has that. And this new album is, is definitely that. Like, she has a couple little bobs for the radio, and that's cute, whatever. But then the rest mm-hmm. of the album is still true to, like, that more soulful kind of, new like, nouveau neo-soul-esque mm-hmm. sound. And I like I like it a lot. Yeah, I do too. Um, really feeling it. Of course, she, you know, poured her heart out into it of everything she's going through with her, you know, child's father, London on the track. Um, but I, shout out to her because she has the biggest album debut ever, the biggest R&B album, album debut ever. She's number one in 40 markets globally. And all her songs are charting between number one and number 22. So all the songs on the album are charting. So wait a minute, this is bigger than when Confessions dropped because you remember when Confessions mm-hmm. dropped. That was that was like seven hundred some thousand units in the first Listen, week. Yes, that's, that's bigger than that. I really thought it, Summer it was Walker was only gonna... it, You know, I like when mm-hmm. artists like give chance to like air things out. Like it's been two years since her original debut. Um, she's we seen publicly that she's gone through a lot, so we knew she was gonna put her heart and put her feelings, put all her emotions into this album. So people were really anticipating it. And the rollout she did was amazing how she like released like, you know, the track names or like the dates, you know, so we know, okay, on this day, she must have been going through something because she wrote this song so we can anticipate that. So I think the way she strategically rolled it out was The marketing perfect, game was, was fantastic. It was hard. And I think that's a lot of it because of course we're going to want to hear the song because we know that you're going through things with your baby daddy. So now mm-hmm. we're like, ooh, we already know that Summer Walker has had to put all her business in her music. So we're like, yep. oh, girl, tell us the details. What happened? <laughs> you know, so I think that that's why a lot of people probably were definitely tuned in to listen to this album. Not that she's not a great artist and that it wasn't going to be great. But I do think that that market strategy and the way that they did that would make, definitely made more people want to listen to the album quicker. So what you're saying is we need to reach out to her publishing team. To, uh, and get on board. to publish for the well, show and get them <laughs> get it out there because they did a hell of a job because <laughs> even I knew about it and normally I'm not cued in like that so that was it's very impressive you're like very. what that part outside of music we definitely had some new movies that have come out um have you guys watched what is it, the heart of they fall yes oh yes. my god I'm gonna give that two thumbs up and a hell yeah. Love that movie from start to finish. <laughs> the writing dialogue was crisp. The spacing of it, the pacing of it, very nice. Love the aesthetic, great camera angles, excellent cast from top to bottom. I give that movie, I'm I'm gonna mm-hmm. say that movie is a solid 7.9 rounds up to eight. That's a solid movie. Cause oh, it was a little okay. hokey at some point. So they had little hokey, little, little, little hokey parts. And people were like, well, I didn't see the twist. And I'm like, nigga, you knew the twist was coming. You already knew that was happening. You already knew what was going to happen with that. So I, I'm yeah. here for mm-hmm. it. I love it. Great movie. Gonna I watch definitely got to um, finish watching it. I tried to watch it in the barbershop. And even though I go to like a small spot, it was like still a lot of talking and stuff going on. So I couldn't really get into it. But I definitely, I was looking at the cast like, 
who paid for this? Like this movie <laughs> costs a lot of money. Netflix. Everybody and their mama Netflix. was in it. Everybody and their mama. Netflix got that big bank. Cause I was mm-hmm. looking at mm-hmm. you look at the cast, you're like, damn, this movie was expensive. I mean, Netflix, they say they are committed to making their own original content and really making it not, you know, like that TV after school special lifetime movie type quality. Like they want to mm-hmm. really give like epics and they're doing so because this was an epic. This was fantastic. Like I say that for people who watch Westerns, it's somewhere between the movie Tombstone and uh, Django. So if you were to take those two movies and kind of put them together, like the aesthetic, mm-hmm. the cast wise, just like using historical figures and telling a mm-hmm. different story with it, it definitely is right in there. And those are two fantastic Westerns and I implore everybody to go see it, support it, give it the streams. Fantastic film. I thought it was so funny. I saw some like negative reviews, but it was all like palm colored people saying, this is historically inaccurate. How can they make a Western on Black people when they weren't even, you know, uh, cowboys back then? But if you do your research, these cowboys are were black historical first. figures. Exactly. And Thank cowboys you. were always Black first. That's why they call them cowboys, because it was disrespectful. Mm-hmm. That's why. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's bullshit. That means people haven't read and they're doing re- revisionist history. It's always a thing. Yeah, exactly. Nonsense. I would say my favorite is probably uh, R.J. Seiler. I think he was hilarious from the time he opened his mouth to unfortunately, well, no spoilers, but I think he was my favorite. That was my first time seeing him. <laughs> you might have... in other... <laughs> oh, we know what happened with that. Well, okay. Great. Great. I didn't awesome. say it. Girl, say stop. It. Stop it. Anyway, Stop it. that was my first time seeing him. He's been in a few other um, films that I have not seen, but that was my first time seeing him. And I'm a fan now, so I'm going to go watch his other films. But there was a couple, like, things that they did in there that I've watched, like, um, interviews afterwards. Um, I mean, you mean my you man was the, the, um, the young guy with the, the fast gun, right? Yes, yes. But what I was going to say is when Regina and uh, 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 Lakeith were walking past the train, did you notice the name on the train? What was it? C. A. Bozeman. It was for Chadwick Bozeman. Oh, that's I don't dope. Know. That's yeah, dope. She you talked know. about that in an interview. She said, "Pay attention if you see the C. A. Bozeman. That's for Chadwick." And then oh. another thing, when Regina, like um, in the initial scene, when Regina held her hand up like this and it went like that, that's what Denzel did that when he played um, Malcolm X. So it's like a few different things that they like put in Little the movie. Easter eggs movie. for you. Okay, yeah, if you paid oh, and, and by the way, RJ Siler was uh the Blue Power Ranger. That's where I know him from. From uh, he was oh, the, okay, okay, the, okay. the Blue Power Ranger in the, uh, the Power Rangers reboot, which actually wasn't terrible. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm a fan of his, so I have to check out some of his other work. But um overall, I thought the movie was phenomenal. It was great. Um I enjoyed the storyline, you know, at the end. Like you say, you can kind of see some, but when they explained the twist, I was like, ah ha. I like that. So shout out to them. Ah, ha. Yeah. Ha. <laughs> So this next movie, well, mm-hmm. Eternals. How'd you guys feel about this? Okay, let me, I didn't watch it. I, no, I saw it. I, I saw know it. I went Tristan to theaters did, and saw so it. I'm gonna tell hear you right you now. I gave that. I didn't a, hear good reviews. I gave that movie a fucking eye roll. Cause you know how you give it two thumbs up, <laughs> four thumbs down. I gave it a fucking eye roll. I was so Why? like, because okay, because it's like just okay, just visually, it didn't even catch me. Like the stuff you were using wasn't even great. Like I felt like I was watching fucking Jurassic Park. Like what was going on? What? Like, like that was back in '93, and that movie holds up. This one didn't even hold up right. And then the story you were telling, you tried nice. to tell it too fast, and the people don't really know the Eternals. You were trying to get people to know them, and you didn't even let people really know these characters. You didn't even really give them that dignity. You know, you only gave them a little broken piece. And I understand you only have so much time, and Marvel's known for like throwing that first movie away so they can like make give the second movie epic. Like they did that with Captain America. Like that first movie was kind of trash a little bit, mm-hmm. and then the Winter Soldier. We all love that one. So I'm hoping that's what this mm-hmm. is, but it just wasn't great. Like the pacing wasn't super great. Um, like it was cool when they showed like the main villain, but like, just like when they showed like the villains, like actually attacking them, they just, it just looked a little hokey. Like I felt like the Disney channel does it better. Like it just wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't super great. And then they tried to like put everything in this movie. It was a hat on top of a hat on top of another hat. And I was like, I get it. Y'all are trying to, to appease everybody but like you know you can take a little bit away you, you know you got to give it all at once but um yeah I, but again i don't think it's any fault of the actors i think all the actors did a fantastic job you know with what they were given i just feel like that was the vision they had for it, and i just felt like it wasn't executed properly so i'm gonna say it was a five because 
Mm. Um, a five out of ten, not a five out of five. I don't want anybody thinking that was what I said. <laughs> a five out of ten. Clear. Uh, because it it's like it's like you know on the scale like the attractive scale. You know, like somebody like a ten, that's like they're really bad. So if someone's a five, they're attractive, like they but just barely so. This is what that is. Oh my. I think a five that's would be funny. ugly, but okay. Well, no, because the thing is that a, yeah, the thing is that anything less than a five, you're not five, talking to. I'm like, what? But you're not talking to anything less than a five. A five is just borderline attractive. It's like the base model of a car. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have any of the bells and whistles. Sure. Oh, my. So let's talk about something that was better on television recently. Have you guys been watching Queens? That comes on, I don't know what bit is on Hulu. I, think I support it, but I haven't been watching it, no. Oh, my goodness. When I, I am. I've been so invested. Like, I've been even thinking <laughs> I'm a rapper and shit. Like. Their little man. I know you want to be with a nasty girl. That's been my little vibe. I, I am definitely a say that couple I episodes behind, but I've been mm -hmm. watching it. I feel like um, I like it. I I just feel like it it can easily slide over to how Empire went. You know, like we were all really invested. corny. And... Yeah, we were all invested the first season or two, but then it became too much, and we were like, mm -hmm. uh, I got to let this stay where it is. So I feel like I don't want it to go that way, and I can see how easily it can slide. It can go that way. Yeah. Do we know like, if the writers are on this show? Maybe? Like to I don't. say what we They're think not. might happen. But I know. Because it's not Lee Daniels. A... And that's who was over um, Empire, so. Because that's always a big deal. Because the thing is that depending on how who they're paying on that writing staff, that storytelling goes awry. You know, they get that first bag and they're just like, all right, we can coast. All right, we're going to do whatever now. We're just going to add in this many characters and do this. And you're like, bro, this is too much going on. But as of right now, for the first season, I'm definitely really tuned in. I love hearing Brandy as a rapper. I really am here for it. I would definitely say that. And I've been enjoying the show thus far. Does she go by Norwood? They call me Norwood. <laughs> no, but that'd be a dope-ass rap name. You know, she she tried to sing that rapping before, so this ain't nothing new. And she listed lyrics. Is her it's not anything new, but the thing about Brandy is that, like, it's not like a stretch to hear her rap because her voice is so deep anyway. So it's not yeah. like it's the so shocking that she rapping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. she definitely has that rap voice. So I mm -hmm. definitely like that. They got this kind of unnecessary um, Hispanic character on there that's kind <laughs> of like throwing it off, but everybody else sounds really good as, uh, yeah, as a rapper. Yeah. The Latinx community, so, we love you. We love you, Latinx. Seeing community. Eve yeah, play too. somebody that's not Shelly with the show called Eve is definitely cool. So I've been <laughs> enjoying that. Shelly. I also wanted to talk to you guys about the Bachelorette. I heard that, isn't there a Black Bachelorette going on right now? This is the third Black Bachelorette. Oh, I only heard about one. The, yeah, there was um, Rachel Lindsay. Um, mm -hmm. You got Tasha got half of a season um, because she was mm -hmm. filling in because the other girl decided to run away with one of the, Claire. the dudes. And then so yeah. now we and have Claire. That's right. Time. She was the oldest bachelorette. Right. And so now they have mm -hmm. Michelle to hells from Minneapolis, Minnesota. My lady watches y'all. So I have, I'm filled in. I'm filled all the way. You got all the tea, clearly. So he's, he's, into like it, so. he's into it. Do you like it? No, this I, don't. I don't. I don't fuck with it because it's so stupid. They just do the same shit and then they just try to bring in like drama. They manufacture drama. Like, okay, so I'll tell y'all real quick about this. So no, as the show was starting, reality. as the show was starting, they um they were going through the guys' rooms like fucking room raiders. I'm like, okay, all right, MTV. <laughs> and then they went through there and then they found this dude that had notes and he had notes about how he was gonna get to like all of this and had it all planned Why out. Why would he bring that? That's what I'm saying. Who would bring that? Like, that's stupid. Let me put that in his room. That's a plant. That's a plant. Exactly. Like the producers yeah. did that. Yeah. What? That's clearly fake. Yeah. And people were like, I can't believe that he would even do that. I'm like, shut the fuck up. He didn't do it. The producers did. So just stop. Just stop it. This shit is stupid, but I get it. People yeah. watch whatever. Okay. People watch. It's entertaining. I I haven't really watched a Bachelor and Bachelorette until um Claire season, just because from the preview, it looked like it was gonna be a good season. And then so I got into it with Claire and Tasha, and then of course Matt, and then you know, from then on. I've kept up with it. This season is entertaining so far. It's, it's so funny to see like guys going at it and guys bickering stuff because you know we're so used to like you know females being cat and going at it. But it's so funny when the guys do it because they're just as bad as females. So I've been thoroughly entertained. I'm glad she sent Jamie home. I need her to get rid of a couple others like Nate can go. Um, I forgot the other boys and the one that owns the pizzeria. He's getting on my nerves. So there's quite a few that can just uh, get out because they're clearly not there for her. But I love Michelle. I feel like Matt should have picked Michelle, but now I'm glad that he didn't. 
because he's like kind of corny to me. Um, so hopefully Michelle can find her happily ever after here. But honestly, all these dating shows are like, so, you know, there's really no point. You really not going to find anybody. It's like that one off chance that some of these couples actually do last on these dating shows. But I, I don't expect much to come from it. I mean, you have a, well, you think about it like this way. If I'm talking about statistics, I mean, I have an exponentially better chance of finding somebody out of 40 dudes or whatever than I do True. like just on Tinder or like hinges True. and shit and then they're all over the country mm -hmm. and like from around the world and stuff or like from Canada and the US right I don't think they have anybody my, else from I, anywhere else right my vote is Olu he is so handsome like girl that chocolate the muscles that's not like girl, he does he does look, look like he went to Howard somewhere though like okay. I feel like, we, <laughs> like we I look, look. let me find Olu Olu where you at let me find his social media holla at you girl like if Michelle don't want you <laughs> I think he an IT analyst. He got sisters, so you know I treat like he was. He was really like in a sentimental bag last night. He shed some tears and stuff for her. Oh God, so, I hate oh when God. they cry on there. That is the wackest shit because it's never real. It's always just like like the dude threw his jacket in the water or something, and he was like, "Yo, I I, gotta go with that." Broke home. my heart though. Like that was so unnecessary, and the fact that he didn't even like snitch on him to Michelle. He just like ate that. I'm like, bro, like that. Yeah, was but so you sexy. couldn't snitch on it because if you snitched on it, should have gotten rid of both of y'all. Y'all know how this works. Yeah, exactly. Your jacket's exactly. gonna dry, bro. It's gonna dry. What do you think is happens when you wash it? Like you never gonna wash the shit. It. Like so again, <laughs> the water with little chlorine. You'll be all right, bro. Like you only crying about the shit. Just so you can get your fifteen minutes on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> and no in the way. boy home last in night. Jacket, I... in, the, in the pool. Shut the fuck up. I'm so done with y'all. I said, oh, she ain't even keep him. Poor Willie. Of course Poor she didn't keep... No, him. she did. No, she kept she kept curly hair, dude. She kept him. She kept him that episode, but last night she eliminated him. Oh, yeah, he was going home anyway. I know he was going home. Yeah. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Sorry to people who haven't watched it yet. He's going home, guys. Poor All right, alert. She... Should have said that first. That's all I have for our music and our TV segments. I mean, but that, that's all we have for the show, really, because <laughs> it's about that time, guys. It really Cut is. Out. Thank you guys Turn for rocking Turn with out. us. Really, we appreciate it. I mean, you know, we've made it we five. Do. This is number six, and you know, we 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 have a goal number in mind. It's uh, infinity because we're gonna keep it right. Going. We're gonna keep counting. Yeah. We're going to keep making it happen. But until the next time, guys. Oh, no. But, you know, guys, check us out. Um, Just please go to our socials. Please check out some pictures. Mm -hmm. Post some new things there on Instagram. Millennial underscore masterclass. Check us out there. Check us out on Twitter. We'll have a few quick tweets on there. You can definitely reach out to us. I mean, I'm on there most of the time. So you'll, you'll be talking to me. If you want to talk to Leslie or Sean, you got to get through me first. Or if they hey, I like Twitter, that. That's cool, too. But if you want to. Girl. You know, and if you want to start sending us questions, you can send us our Gmail. Because we're going to have a mailbag episode. I mean, we've been talking about this for forever. We would love to hear from your questions. Or you can email us too. And our email is out there as well. So definitely. The Millennial Masterclass at gmail.com. I think, isn't it Millennial Masterclass at PC? At oh. .com? It'll be in the link, That's guys. Said, it'll, be, it'll, be under, it'll be in the bio. We'll take care of that for you. But until the next time, guys, I've been Tris. It's your girl, Liz. It's Sean the Don. And that's right, y'all. The party may change, but the vibe remains the same. Until the next time, guys, we out. Yay, yay. You're not going to make the sound, Sean? You're not going to make it? Oh, y'all was talking shit earlier. Yeah. All right, we out. Goodbye, y'all. Peace oh, out. Bye, y'all.